Okay, now we are good. <laughs> yeah, okay, so. Okay, now let me, the screen is paused. Okay, we have to go back. So let me get out of this one. So we can go back. What am I, where's my share screen? Okay, are you guys seeing? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. All right, so let's go back to, let's go back to the presentation and we were, and we don't have too many slides. We were here. Okay. So, yes. So we were making a point of the fact that we stop, we start the conversation with verse five, okay? And we wanted to start with the English standard version because there, there, there is a notion that uh, this version is giving us that is very good to start the, the conversation with. It says, blessed are those whose strength is in you, in whose heart are the highways of Zion, okay? So, we see the strength of the Lord is equated to being in a state of blessing. When we put our strength in, in the Lord, we are blessed. When we find strength in the Lord, we are blessed. When we pull st strength from the Lord, we are blessed. Because these three ways with the strength of the Lord is different. Finding strength in the Lord is a sense of hope. Pulling strength from the Lord is a, a sense of being armed. It's an armor that I put on. You see? So, Standing in the strength of the Lord is a posture that I have because what I'm standing on is a rock of my salvation. And on, on that rock, when I stand, I know that I cannot be moved. So that's, that's a power of resilience. It's an equipping that helps me Move in a certain way with assurance. When I pull from the Lord, I pull hope. No, when I pull from the Lord, I pull an equipment, a, a, a mental. There you go. I take a mental, I find hope. And I stand on. So these three things are what the strength of the Lord gives to me. And that, according to Psalm 84, 5, is a blessing. And we're mm -hmm. going to see why this psalm is starting with that. Because it says, why is it a blessing? In whose heart are the highways of Zion? So we see that it, the heart has been, a, the heart has a direction. The heart is directed. The heart is giving a, a, a way, a direction, a, a travel. The heart is giving a a movement from point A to point B because without that necessity to move, we won't talk about a road because something that is not moving doesn't need a road. It doesn't need a way. So we wouldn't talk about highway here. So by talking about a highway being carved in a heart, we are instructed that the, the heart of those 
who find strength in the Lord are in a movement. These are hard that have direction. Our heart have been carved and molded and structured because a highway is a road, it's a pathway. And it's not a pathway like one that you create in the wilderness because a pathway in the wilderness has no, um, it's not treated, it's not intentionally um, planned uh, with, you know, uh, the proper equipment cleared out, um, managed because highways are managed. Sometimes you see signs says um, uh, adopt a highway because highways are not left like that. Highways are managed. They have to be, um, you know, steward. You see, so the highway of our heart, our heart is being molded. Our heart is being given a direction. Our heart is being structured. Our heart is being carved. In our heart, the carving of our heart yield a highway. And he said, in those, in whose heart are highways, okay? So our heart has an infrastructure, a road, and that road is not a small one. It's not a one, um, you know, haphazardly made by someone who got lost in the wilderness and trying to find a way and it's narrow with the, uh, you know, thistles and, and branches and trees and and all you can see are steps, you know, the, the, the footprints that you can see that, oh, this might lead to somewhere. Let me follow this footprint. Maybe I can get somewhere. No, a highway is a, a road that is planned. It is intentionally designed and it's managed, it is structured. A road, a highway is also a road that is equipped with safety, enough safety that a, a, um, there is a, a sense of security that is also made available to anyone who, who take those highways. That's the reason why the speed limit is a little higher than those roads in the town or those roads in the countryside. Because it's been so managed and so planned, like city planning, plain highways, and it's been so well built, so well constructed. It's been also equipped with some safety measures. And it's also been, uh, you know, um, um, left to be managed, not left unkept. So because of that, the highway has a little more security, a little more safety. So the speed limit is, is you know, intentionally raised because this highway is giving more security to go faster than a small narrow road. So the heart of the one whose strength is in the Lord is a heart that is unhindered. It's a heart that does not have any, uh, you know, those, um, how do you call that? Um, those um, neighborhood uh, uh, security things that they put on the road, uh, the, the name of it is escape, escaping me. They put a little bump, speed bump. There you go. You know, a highway doesn't have a speed, speed bump. Because a speed bump is supposed to even make the driver to slow down even more than the limited allow, legally allow um, speed. Because maybe even though it is a 25 miles per hour road, there's still it, it's still in a neighborhood. So there are people or concede, I mean, um, yeah, concede to have or expected to have children or, or bicycle, you know, riders or pedestrian 
crossing the street at any time, walkers or, you know, parents will be young children pushing a stroller. All of these demand the neighborhood to have speed bump. That's not the highway. So the heart of the one who trusts in the Lord, who has strength in the Lord, who finds strength in the Lord, is a heart that is unhindered. It's a heart that is not cautioned or cautious, rather. It's a, a heart that is not cautious. It's a heart that is free. Like some cities are called the highway, the freeway. It's a heart that is free. It's a heart that moves in the direction that the Lord guides. And it's a heart that is going to a place called Zion. The highways of Zion. It's a heart that has an, a, a, an easy travel to, to Zion. There's no stop sign on the highway. There's no, um, you know, red light, traffic light on the highway. And the speed limit is a little higher compared to neighborhood or town or, you know, countryside road. So I want to pause here and I want to speak to you, um, daughters of Zion, ministers of the Lord, what do you, what is the Lord telling you about this particular verse? What are you receiving? What, what is your, what are you getting? How are you gearing your revelation or your heart or your understanding? Let's, let's pause here and talk a little bit. Anyone? Well, actually, Reverend Denise, um, yes. the Lord has been speaking to me about this particular um, subject, because actually tomorrow I'm teaching for Minister Caroline, and I'm teaching about the different types of soils in our hearts. Uh -huh. So um, he has here, he has been speaking to me that my heart needs to be free, free Man. from, yeah, free from, I recognize there's anger, um, there's things that, you know, insecurities, um, you know, we go like 10 step forward and then a couple step backward. So I need to be totally, I believe this session is for me. Um, I believe God wants, and I do want my heart to be free so I could bring freedom to others. To, in some areas, I, would, I realize I'm limited like afraid to love or cautious to love wholeheartedly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is my journey too. This is my journey and I echo that. Hi. Yes. Anyone else? Okay. Let's move on to the next verse. So, with that, we say uh, the 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 psalmist continue to express that and say, as they go through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of spring. The early rain also covers it with pools. Now, um, as they make they they go through the valley of Baca, okay. When they go, an assurance of that going. If you say, say, as they go, as they go, it's not if they go. So going through the valley of Baca is an assurance. It's not a, it's not a possibility. They make it a place of spring. Now, let's pause into to that sentence. They make it a place of spring. The Valley of Baca is equated to a time of sorrow. It's equated to a time of pain. Just like David was saying, when I go through the valley 
overshadowed by death. It's that kind of valley. It's that kind of valley. A time of sorrow, a time, um, for instance, my my um my um uh, cleaning lady will be praying for went to surgery for cancer and she's been in the hospital for two months and um a colleague told me that um it's not looking good i was so praying and hoping and believing that she will be receiving a miraculous healing but this is a valley of baka right there that's a valley of baka then make it a place of spring so it doesn't say you lord make it a place of spring it's not saying that the lord is making it a place of spring it said they make it a place of spring so that means that the one who finds strength in the lord me denise who finds strength in the lord my heart in my heart, the Lord carves, if I yield it to him, he will carve highways to Zion so that as I go through the valley of Baca, I make it a, a, a place of spring. I decide that I have to turn this situation around. I have to find peace that surpasses all understanding. I have to be anchored by him, and he alone gives me relief. It doesn't mean that I'm no longer a human being. It doesn't mean that my, nerv my nervous system is dead. My brain is dead. I, I walk around like a, you know, a nonsensical, non-sensitive, non you know, uh, person. No. I am fully functioning. All my senses are functioning. My reaction to pain is at its peak. My reaction to happiness is at its peak. Deception, all of this is at its peak. If somebody insult me, disrespect me, condescend toward me, whatever it is that it is done toward me that I find negative, I will feel it. I will feel it. That's how God wired me. And, I, and I'm thinking you as well. Because that means that you and I are human beings. We did not drop from the sky. You see? So he is expecting us to fully function in our humanity. But at the same time, to be able to find our strength in him and wear it as a a garment as a, a, an, an, an equipping that enabled us to make now the decision. So this verse, the word make, the verse make is an active verse. Is a, is a verse that um, is not a passive verse. It's a verse that produces, it's a verse that um, um, moves. Uh, a does is a living verse, is a doing verse. Therefore, it's a decision based verse. So, the this verse, in order for this verse to be released or to come to, to pass, that verse, uh, 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 um, that power is in the hand of the maker, of the one making it. So if I say they make a place of spring, I make a place of spring. I have to make a decision to say, okay, it is tough at work. I have to turn to my father to say, father, this is too much for me. I can't take it. Help me to do this work. Help me to understand. Help me to make sure that I don't make a mistake. Help me. This is me taking a decision to make it a place of spring and know that each day when I wake up, I am grateful to have a job. I am grateful to have a paycheck. I am grateful to have a remuneration for my family. So I turn that into making it a place of spring. Something can be going on in the family. It could be something in the, fam in the marriage. It could be something in the 
wheresoever it is coming from, I have to rise up and make the decision, take the decision to make it a spring, a place of spring. The early rain also covers it with pools. Now, this one is an interesting one. The early rain is the dew, okay? We, uh, we know that the latter rain is better than the early rain, but the early rain is a fresh rain that it's 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 a it's a beginning of a blessing. It's a it's a it's a first place of blessing. It's a it's a beginning of of knowing that the Lord is with me. It's the assurance of the presence of God. It's the assurance of the blessings of God. Now, when you go to the latter rain, that's when you get the outpouring, the overflowing. But the early rain, when you rise up in the morning, the Lord says, in some uh, I think five or three, five or five, three that I think it's five, three that he's awaiting our prayers in the morning. You see, he's awaiting to pour it out. That's the early, early rain. So the early rain now comes and covers it with pools. The early rain covers it with pools. Pools are abundant of water that are contained in a in a in a place you see so pools and it doesn't even say only pools say pools pools plural so multiplicity of blessing contained in the container blessing container uh blessings that are in a container hallelujah so as we look at here Psalm 5, 3, my voice shall thou hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee and will look up. Hallelujah. So the, the early rain, the morning rain, the early rain is the presence of God. It is, it is, it is blessing. It's, it's the knowing of, of him being with us. He covers it with pools. Hallelujah. Then we, if we move to verse, oh, excuse me. If we move to verse um, seven, he says, they go from strength to strength. They go from strength to strength. We know that any plant, any plant that receives water grows, gets strengthened, even flat out moves up from growing to producing fruit. So we go from strength to strength. Hallelujah. We can do the whole Psalm 84, but I want us to. We're going to take the verse 8 as a prayer. Verse 8, 9 to 12. We're going to take those verses as prayers. And 1 to 4. Yeah, we could have started the verse at 4 anyway. But... Um, one to three is um is kind of a praise, okay. So we will start with one to three, and then we end with the, with the, um prayer and supplication with nine to um nine to twelve. So this is short. It's a short couple of verses that I would I wanted us to be paying attention to, um, because it's um it kind of spoke to me. And this version of NIV says, verse 5 and 6, Blessed are those whose strength is in you, who have set their heart on pilgrimage. What do we know about pilgrimage? What is a pilgrimage? What is a pilgrimage? The first thing we know is it's a journey. What kind of journey? What is a pilgrimage? Maybe we can look it up. 
What kind of journey? Is it a vacation journey? What's the difference between a vacation and a pilgrimage? Is anybody connected? Yes, we're connected. <laughs> what is a what is a uh, what is a pilgrimage compared to a vacation? Or compared to any other trip, for that matter. Okay, so Wikipedia, if we see, for instance, when we're looking at um, Acts of the Apostle, chapter 2, when they received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, they came out and spoke to 3,000 people. Why was these 3,000 people gathered there? These are Jews that were in the diaspora, that were... Uh, all over the world that travel to Jerusalem for the Feast of Pentecost. They go there to pilgrim, pilgr as a pilgrim to the to the motherland, to the to to their hometown. Some of them are not even from there, but they are of the confession of the of the um how do you call that of the uh, religious belief of Abraham, a Abraham, you see? So the, 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 the Jew who converted or were born Jew, who uh, adventured themselves or who find Judaism, Judaism where they're living and receive instruction, they know that at that time of the year, you travel and pilgrim there for religious purposes and observance, for religious, um, yeah, observation or observance rather, for religious motives. So this is how they travel there. So that you can we can you can call that a pilgrimage. A pilgrimage, Wikipedia says, is a journey, often unto an an unknown or foreign place where a person goes in search of new or expanded meaning about their self, others, nature, or a higher good through the experience. It can lead to a personal transformation after which the pilgrim returns to their daily life. You see, he can lead to their transformation. So as we set our hearts into the pilgrimage, we are being led into a transformed heart, a renewed heart, a heart that has been structured or restructured. Re the new re infrastructure has been in place the new road has been um, um, built in our heart to take us to Zion. Zion is a place of triumph. It's a place of deliverance. It's a place of victory. It's a city on a hill. It's an identity. It's who we are. So that means that there is something in us that has to be showing the kingdom we belong to. And it's that in our hearts. It's that in our hearts. So if you can see, even through this, these two verses, you can you can understand that that very principle that the Lord Jesus came to teach us did not was not born in the New Testament. It's a it's a covenantal issue. It's a covenant. It's about that's what is he is about. That's what God is about. So whether you start from Genesis or go to Revelation. This should be bleeding throughout the scriptures. 
the fact that our heart is the place where everything is sealed, where all the contract, all the covenant, all the everything is done. It's a place where the deal is done. It's the heart. When our heart is on the pilgrimage, on the highway to Zion, our heart finds transformation. We find expansion, expanded meaning about who we are as citizens of Mount Zion. Who we are that are called Zion. Just like you are born in America, or even if you are naturalized in America, you are in the land called America. When you take your passport and go to Europe or go out of America, they call you by the name of a land. That's the same thing with Zion. We have to be able to heal our heart so that we can be identified as a place of our citizenship. And it's this pilgrimage that our heart is on that transform our heart into being Zion proper, if I can use it like that. So that it bleeds into our way of thinking, our action, our word. And the fruit that we yield attest and testify to who we are. So I'll stop here. If anybody has something to comment or conclude and then we'll pray um there is a um a group called beloved women and susan brenner is an author also and um i have to quote here one is from beloved women say the highways of zion are pathway in our heart that take us from strength to strength as we journey higher up and deeper into his truth the highways of Zion are pathways in our hearts that take us from strength to strength. As we journey higher up, as we journey higher up and deeper into his truth. Now, Susan Venner says, God, that's actually a prayer. God creates um, creating me a highway that leads right into your presence. Okay. So I will stop here and we'll take on um, verse one to any question and comment. We will pray with them. The rest of uh, Psalm 84. Any question or comment? Hello, no, we're, we're reading. No, this this is that verse that says that there is deliverance on Mount Zion, and and how the the how they're saying that they, they take the pilgrim to go to you know to that place to that Mount Zion to that place, and then with all the blessings that you receive when you go there. And how the scripture is also talking about that. Other say, say they each go from strength to strength. Mm -hmm. Each one appears before God in Zion. That's so right. you, you go there and you're coming back full with a lot of blessings, with a lot of strength because you've met the Lord. Mm -hmm. And whatever you're going there, you know, when you were teaching i was just thinking you're carrying your problems whether you're carrying to the presence of the lord and you That's come right. back you don't go and you come back the same you come the back same. exactly hands on mount zion exactly you surely don't come back the same that's that's right exactly thank you for that contribution amen mm -hmm. Anyone else? Okay. Well, um, we're gonna. Uh, uh, Vera, do you mind taking verse one to 
one, two, three. Okay. And uh, these are verses of praise. So we're going to praise him. And then we take the verses of prayer, uh, eight to 12. So lead us into praising him. It doesn't matter which version I use, right? It doesn't matter. You can um, join us in prayer. So we pray, then we read the verse. That's what you're saying, Mama. No, you use the verse. Use the verse as as praise verse. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Psalm 84, 1 to 3. Amen. It says, How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. Father, we thank you that we are in your dwelling place. Your dwelling place is lovely. Father, God, you're in your presence, there is fullness of joy. So we come in your presence this afternoon to Jesus. We come to dwell in your presence where there is fullness of joy, where there is deliverance, where there is hope, where there is love. My soul longs, yes, things for the court of the Lord. My heart and flesh seek for God, to the living God. Even the sparrows fly, find a home, and, and the swallows a nest for themselves. Yes, Where Lord. she may lay oh, her young <laughs> at your altar. Yes, oh, Lord, 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 my King and my God. Amen. Father, we just come, we bless your name, we worship you, we thank you, we praise your name, we thank you for being in your presence, oh God. Father, with birth and lay their egg in peace, everyone can come your presence, oh God, and find and find hope and find love and find healing and find everything that's in your presence. Father, we thank you for the fullness of joy that we have in your presence. We just worship you, we thank you. We bless your holy name. We adore you. We worship you. We glorify your name. We magnify your name. Oh, God of the Father, we worship you. Jehovah, Jehovah is your name. Father God, in your presence there is joy. There is fullness of joy. Father, we thank you for the joy. We thank you. We just fill ourselves in your joy. We thank you for healing. We thank you for blessings. We thank you, oh God, for the love that comes in from your presence. Oh, Father, we we give you thanks, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise your holy name, we thank you for your presence, we thank you for this hour of worship, we thank you for this hour of presence, we come, we pour down ourselves at your altar, bowing down at your presence, just worshiping you, adoring you, glorifying you, magnifying your name, exalting your name, oh God of hosts, we worship you, we thank you for Mount Zion, oh God, I thank you, thank you, there is deliverance on Mount Zion. Father, we bless your name, Jehovah. You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you. We worship you. We We give you all the glory and all the praise. Take all the honor. Take all the adoration. Take all the praises. Father God, accept our praises. Come, oh God. Father God, we come in your presence. All our praises, we pour it out to you. We pour it out to you. All of us, we pour it out to you. Our hearts, you you God. Oh, forgive us, set us free. Forgive us, set us free from every bondage. Take all the glory. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. Oh, Father, we worship you. Jehovah, we worship you. We worship you. Amen. Our city, our flesh yearn for you. Our heart yearn for you. Father, we yield our heart to you. That you yourself, Father, design Roko Sandra about the highway in our heart that takes us to Zion. Father, Reba Papa, we heal our heart that is unblocked. No, there's no Reba Papa, speed bump on the highway. Let nothing, Father, hinder us in our heart. Let our heart be fluid, let our heart be hollow. 
Let our heart be so that Father real our journey to Zion be real Sandra ba 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 easy be roko Sandra ba unhindered roko Sandra ba city Father we yield our heart to you Lord. We say purge our heart, remove roadblocks, remove debris, remove broken paths that are blocking the way, remove anything in the highway that is not supposed to be there. Father, in city, we yield our heart to you, Father, transform our heart. You are designed the highway to Zion yourself, our Lord. Help us to not share to love. Remove the fear out of our heart. Oh, Help us to stay true to ourselves. Amen. Help us to continue doing good that please you. That no human action or human behavior can make us change or transform. Oh, yes, Papa. Help us to help our heart to stay pure. Help our heart to stay unhindered. Help our heart to stay unblocked. Help our heart to reba pa 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 from any negativity, opposition, or pain. Forgiveness. our prayer, O Lord God Almighty. Listen to us, O God of Look upon our shield, O oh God. Look with favor on us, Father. You have anointed us yourself. Lord, better is one day in your court than a thousand elsewhere. Lord, we rather be doorkeepers in your house. The house of our God, the house of our Father, than dwell in the tent of the wicked. Oh Lord, to refuse Sandra City. For you, Lord, the Lord God, you are the sun. You are a shield. You bestow favor and honor upon us, oh Lord. You don't withhold any good thing from us, oh Lord. Reko Sandra City. Help us to walk blameless. Help our heart to travel blameless, mm. to travel easily, to travel unhindered. We plead right now the blood of Jesus to cleanse us and purge us every day of our lives, every hour of our day, every minute of our hour. We plead the blood of Jesus to keep us blameless, to keep us justified, to keep mm -hmm. us spoken for. In this season, Lord, the season to come before you with mercy and repentance, we yield to you. We say, Father, help our heart. We cannot help our heart ourselves. Help our mind. We cannot heal it ourselves. Help our thought. We cannot direct them ourselves. Purify our mouth. We don't have the cold. You have the cold to cleanse our mouth. Father, your blood is what washes our hand and our feet. Lord, cover us with the crown. The crown of tender mercy, loving kindness that you give to us. We stand to receive those crowns. In this season, Lord, as we prepare for a brand new spiritual year, Lord, we say have mercy on us. We thank you for your mercy. We say, have mercy on us. We thank you for your mercy. We say, have mercy on us. We thank you for your mercy. We say, have mercy on us. Anyone 
that's still hiding somewhere in our hearts. Mm. Oh, that is still hiding somewhere in a prison in our heart. Lord, we say our heart has a highway to Zion. Let that person be exposed. Let that person be brought forth so that we can forgive and release that person and be free. Our heart has a highway. Our heart has a highway. A highway is not hindered. A highway does, has no debris. A highway has no blockage. A highway is a freeway. Therefore, we say, Lord, set our heart free. Set our mind free. Set us free mm -hmm. ourselves. In the mighty name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Anyone receive anything when we were praying? That's fine. Anyone has a prayer point? Let me stop recording. <laughs>